So you made us wait 15 years for a goddamn album that you decided to scrap, then you make this shit in record time because you got a movie coming out. Nigga, I just, I swear. What's going on everybody? It's the granddad of granddad Wooly and you are here again for another edition of Wooly Reviews. Hip Hop Data. Today we got an album review today. We're going to be talking about the brand new and unexpected album from a legendary West Coast producer. He's back. He dropped some shit. Nobody knew it was coming. We thought it was the shit we was waiting for. But then he was like, nah, nigga, I ain't doing that shit no more. So you take this shit and like it, bitch. And we we did. We, we accepted it. We couldn't say no. I mean, shit, what we gonna do about it? Talking about the new album from Dr. Dre entitled Compton, which is also a soundtrack to the new movie Straight Outta Compton. So it's like a soundtrack slash album. It's an album that's a soundtrack, nigga. But that's the new shit from Dr. Dre. For those who don't know who Dr. Dre is, first off, what and fuck you. But I'll tell you anyway, you dumb sons of bitches. He is one-fifth of the supergroup NWA, which was one of the most controversial hip-hop groups back in the early 90s. I mean, they had the tracks like Straight Outta Compton and Fuck the Police, just to name a couple. It was like one of the most controversial hip-hop groups of all time. He's also responsible for discovering the other legendary rapper, Eminem. Yes, Dre was that guy. And also people like 50 Cent, The Game, just to name a couple other people. Kendrick Lamar is now his newest under his wing. He, he's got the minus touch when it comes to artists and his other things. He's dropped legendary albums himself, like his debut album, The Chronic, which is a classic, as well as his follow-up, 2001, which is also a classic. And then we waited for Detox, which shit took 15 years, and then the nigga said, fuck it, I don't like it. This shit sucks. He said it himself. He said, this shit's whack, nigga. I'm not putting this bullshit out. So here's Compton. So that's what we're going to talk about. So let's see if Compton is the redeeming, saving grace album that we've been waiting for or is it just a letdown like he said detox would have been let's talk about the shit so when i first put this album on the first thing i set my sights or my ears on was the production scene as dr dre is the producer he makes the beats and he is that dude for making some of the greatest and most legendary hip-hop beats of all time so i was really looking forward to hearing some new dre beats and seeing what he was bringing and on this album he does take the production reins but he does have a lot of other producers come in and help with it as well he's got a whole list of other producers on here uh, too many to goddamn remember so i got him here let me he's got focus on here dj dahi dim joints bink dj khalil best kept secret uh, fucking DJ Premier's here, Cardiac's here, Nephew, just fuck, a lot of motherfuckers here. You know, I think that's all of them, but they all come in and lend their production chops, but it's usually Dre that takes most control of these beats, and you can hear it, it has that signature Dre sound that Dre just knows. You know a Dre beat when you hear it, or a Dre style, and it's all in this album. The beats here sound a little bit more modern. Usually when you get a Dr. Dre album, it's really, you know, inventive or something different, but here I think Dre catered to more of a modern type sound, so some of the beats sound really familiar, and I also think it also plays in the fact that other producers came in and chimed in, so a little bit of their taste and their style have been incorporated in Dre's style, and it's sort of a blend in the production. For the most part, the beats on here are really good. It's got that dark, gritty, West Coast feel that we know from Dre, but it's also a lot of inventive things in here. He also, you know, tampers with a little trap influence on some tracks. There's some really good instrumentation on this album, too. I like the percussion on here. There's a lot of good horns on here, um, some good piano on here as well. And Dre just, you know, plays it around with a lot of sounds like he usually does. There's some sounds here that I can't even make up what the instrument is, probably because they've been tweaked or adjusted so much how Dre does those things, but it sounds really good and it fits the mold. But for the most part, I think the production on here is really solid and Dre has not lost a step really. He still has that high quality, high end production. It's just not probably what people would expect from him. Like with The Chronic and 2001, he had a lot of really good, you know, soulful, really, you know, laid back West Coast vibey, but very, very, very inventive for the time. You know, The Chronic was very inventive and then 2001 was, but Compton is not as much as inventive as the other two albums. So some people may be put off on that, especially if you're a big Dre fan, or especially of his production. That may set you back but the beats on here are really good now let's talk about the long list of motherfuckers he got to sing and rap on here as well as himself rapping but you know Dre don't write bars he got ghostwriters but you know the ghostwriters did a good damn job on this album so let's talk about these MCs and artists and singers and all that other shit and see what they brought to Compton now, even though this is a Dr. Dre album, if you know anything about Dr. Dre albums, he usually has a lot of motherfuckers on his album, a lot of features on here. And on Compton, he kind of uses like the same batch of artists on all the songs. I mean, you get a lot of variety in an artist, but he just brings them all back in a 16-song album. So you get people like Kendrick Lamar, Marsha Ambrosius, 
uh, John Connors here. Eminem makes an appearance on here. Anderson Pox on here quite a bit. Justice, King Mez, just to name a few. That's a lot of motherfuckers on this album. But the thing is, is that, you know, they're all utilized, you know, for the most part in the same way. You don't really get any, you know, as variants in the actual artists. Pretty much it's the people who you expect Dre to work with. There's nobody here that you wouldn't expect to see on this album or you wouldn't, you know, you know, be surprised that they're on this album for the most part. But they all, for the most part, come through and bring solid performances. I found myself most impressed by King Mez. I never listened to a lot of King Mess, so I liked his work on here. Dr. Dre even brought a good flow and a good style with his songs on here. The songwriters on his shit was doing was on point, but he brings a lot of good energy when he raps even on this album, and he, he raps on here for the majority of the album on here. But there's also other cuts, like John Connor's got his own cut, uh, The Game's here for his own cut. But even in that, you still get that Dre production and it fits well, so even though Dre may not be on the song, you still get that Dre vibe and Dre aura, which actually fits the song. Now this album here is really influenced by the, the movie Straight Outta Compton, but it's also just talking about Dre himself coming up from Compton and making it to where he is now, which is a super successful producer and entrepreneur. So you just kind of see his whole legacy coming from the bottom and up and how he incorporates that and talks about that in his songs. So it's a really dope album, a really dope concept. It's not what we would expect from Dre and it's not the detox that you're probably looking forward to, but Compton does have its own place and its own thing about it and its own charm that I think people will like. Even though the production isn't as inventive as the other Dre albums, it is really solid and good. And the artists that he does have on here are very talented and they really do a good job on here. And I like what they did with the majority of the album. I can actually play the whole thing front to back. There are some songs that stick out more to me than the others, but there's not a lot of songs here that bother me, but there were some spots that I found were a tad bit forgettable. But for the most part, Dre came through with a really good album. Now, you know I gotta give him a top five tracks, and this is a little bit difficult because there were a lot of songs here that I liked, but then there were songs here that I really liked based on a certain particular part of the song, and I really didn't care for all of the song. So it took me a while to really process this, but these are the top five tracks that I found that I enjoyed the most. So the first song is actually the second track on the album. The first track is an intro that really builds it up. It's talking about Compton and everything like that and the history of Compton sort of. And it leads in really dope and really seamlessly into this actual track. And it's called Talk About It. And this features King, Mez, and Justice. And on here, there's a lot of high energy. It's, it's really like a grand entrance to Compton in the album. And it's just got a lot of good energy on it. I like King, Mez on here. I like his energy. It really impressed me. The first verse was a nice little like, you know, teaser for his skills. But the second, the second verse he did, at the end of the song he really kicked it up a notch and you know the hook is really dope that's done by justice it really fits well it's got a nice little breakdown and the uh, dre on here he really has a cool verse on here and i like a line that was on here that he spit where he said you know getting money before the internet still got eminem checks that i ain't open yet which basically means that before all you know how how the industry is now where everything's internet driven he was already doing big things before then and he still got money that he made years ago that he ain't even spent yet that just shows how how, how impactful and just how successful dre has been in this industry and you know these new people here just gotta recognize that dre is still the shit and he may be gone for 15 years but he can still drop an album and fuck your life up if he wants to and he most likely will. But that's the dope track, and it's a good way to start off the album. A lot of high energy. He's even got a little bit of a trap influence on the production, but I think it's really dope. It's not overdone. It's just enough to get you hype enough, but it's just enough to also still have that Dre essence and Dre feel, and you know you can really believe the track, and it just has that great energy, and I like how it opened the album up. The next track that I like is Dark Side Slash Gone, and this also features King Mez as well as Kendrick Lamar and Marsha Ambrosius. And this track here is sort of split into two. The first half, which is called Dark Side, is done by uh, King Mez, which is a really cool track. It's a nice little dark vibe to it. It's cool. But what really stands out to me is the second half when uh, Marsha Ambrosius comes in and the Easy E sample that kind of leads into it. There's the Easy E sample that really leads into it, which is really dope. And then there's a nice, really nice dark piano on here that I really like. And Kendrick Lamar and Dr. Dre come in with really dope verses. And basically it's talking about them coming up in the industry and, you know, just pretty much attaining that success and dealing with, you know, what happens when you reach that level of success, especially living in an environment or coming from an environment such as Compton where most people don't get to make it out and be as successful as the likes of a Dr. Dre or a Kendrick Lamar. It's a really dope record and the second half of this hour, second half of this song actually really, really picks it up for me. The first half is a good lead in, but that second half really kicks in when they drop in Marsha Ambrosius and you know Kendrick and Dre. King Mez does a good job of building the song up, but the other three just take it to another level when it goes to their part and I really enjoyed that song. 
for mostly for the second half, but I can listen to the whole track and in, in general and be fine with it. But that second half is really what gets me excited about this track, so it's a dope one. Next track is For the Love of Money, and I like this track strictly for the fact that it's got the Bone Thugs and Harmony song For the Love of Money sampled in here. It's done so well, but the thing about this is, you know, it's really just a really laid back, chill, but still a dark type of song. John Connor's on here, and he drops a really dope verse. John Connor's got a real nice flow, and, you know, he's the newest member of Aftermath, so he's got something to prove, and he is proving it on these records. Dre does a nice verse on here, and um, Jill Scott, she's on the hook on this track, and I love Jill Scott's hook on here. It really just brings the song together really well, on top of the fact of just the sample that's included in there. So this is one of those songs that really stuck out for me, just based off the fact of the sample and the production on here. But, you know, with John Connor's verses and, you know, Jill Scott's hook and even Dre does a good job on here. It really just takes it to another level and that really stuck out to me and it's a dope record. The next track on the album that I was a little bit back and forth on but I finally decided to go with was the song Medicine Man and that features Eminem, Candice Pillay, and Anderson Pac. Now, this song right here is a dope concept because I like the fact that they're talking about you know how fake rappers are and pretty much Dr. Dre sees them as ill patients that he has to get rid of. So he kind of plays off his whole doctor role and just saying that, you know, you need to take your medicine and fix yourself or we're going to, you know, pretty much just, you know, make you a dead patient pretty much is what you're doing in this industry is wrong and not how things are supposed to go. It's a dope concept. His part on here is a little okay, but the really shining moments of this actual song is Eminem. When he kicks in at the second half of this track, he completely takes over and he just makes this his own record and he really stands out. And I was really impressed. This is probably one of the more impressive Eminem verses that I've heard as of late. He's been a little wishy-washy with the verses lately, but this one here is so goddamn good. It's too good for me to even explain. Just listen to the shit. He fucking kills it. And this is what the really standout moment of this track is and which really ultimately made me put it in one of my favorites. Just the Eminem part here just fucking takes care of everything else. Everything else here is cool, but that Eminem part is what really makes this track a real standout. My last track is also the last track on the album is Talking to My Diary. This is probably the more personal track from Dr. Dre where he pretty much just opens up and, you know, explains everything from, you know, his childhood growing up with his family and his mom to also the, you know, the, the times that he had with, you know, his fellow NWA members as well as everything else with the industry and, you know, the ups and downs he had to deal with and getting to the point that he had, that he is now. He's pretty much just, you know, making himself an open book and just explaining everything that he feels and how he thinks and just what he's went through. And it's a good way to close this track. It's sort of a full circle moment and it really just brings this whole concept of the whole Compton soundtrack and album together and how it just centers around Dre's perception of, you know, being in this city and living and growing up in this area and how it's affected him and how it shaped him as a person, not only in music but also in general so it's a dope way to close out the album and i really enjoyed that album as well as the ending it had a really nice uh horn trumpet solo out that really just it was really really good it really just you know was the perfect way to end it out and it, you know the instrumentation on it was really really nice and i really like that and it just made for a really dope closing of a really dope album. But those are my top five tracks. But for the most part, this album has a lot of shiny moments. But it's just not probably as grand or as great that most people would expect it to be or think it should be. Because it's such a high standard for Dr. Dre when it comes to albums based off the first two albums he's dropped. So, I mean, it's, he's going in sort of at a disadvantage. But I think he did pull off a really, really good album. I enjoyed it for the most part. Is it a perfect album? No, but it's a very, very good album. And it's something that you can listen to front to back. And there's a lot of standout moments. There's a lot of good artists on here. And, you know, and they bring a lot of good energy on here. And I think it's just a really dope experience to listen to. And it's a really dope concept. And at the end of it all, we got a brand new Dr. Dre album. No, it's not the album that we were expecting, but we got one and it's a good album. So let's fucking, let's just fucking appreciate that shit. God damn it. Like better than nothing, motherfucker. So my final verdict, I'm not saying that Dr. Dre Compton is a very solid, well put together album with a nice feature list and a nice set of productions and producers to help him make these beats sound really good. All I'm saying is that beats on here are dope, even though they sound a little bit more modern and not as inventive as his previous albums, they're still good to listen to. He still, you know, plays around with a lot of different sounds and a lot of different samples, and it really does make an enjoyable listening experience. Not maybe as good as the other ones, but still something that you can sit and listen to and appreciate. The features on here are hefty. He does use the same artists or pretty much all over this album, but they do come through with some really quality bars and singing and concepts. They don't always hit, but some, it's more hits than misses for me when it comes to these. And there are a lot of standout moments, especially with guys like King Mez, Eminem definitely, John Connor does good on here. Even, you know, the game comes through, you know, Ice Cube's on here. 
Uh, Snoop's on here. He's got all the usual suspects on here, and they all come through and bring some quality, quality material. So you got to appreciate that. But all in all, it's still not the greatest album I've ever heard, and it's not going to meet the expectations of what we wanted from Dre. And we can hear it on this album, but he did give us something really, really good, and we got to appreciate that. So for me, all I have to say is that Dr. Dre Compton is not granddad approved, but I will give it a very highly granddad recommended. So go check it out. It's out right now. I think it's exclusive on Apple iTunes and uh, iTunes Music or Apple Music or whatever the fuck it's called. I've reviewed the shit. I should know. But you know, it's only on Apple. So you got to check it out there. Um, support the album or stream it at least. It's a good project. It's a good album. And I mean, we got something out of Dre finally. It took him over 16, 15, 16 years. I don't fucking know. Too many goddamn years. Over a goddamn decade. And we finally got some shit. And this is supposed to be his last album. So if this is his last album, is it the grand, grand finale we want? Maybe not. But it's a good way to go out, I would say. It's better than what we probably could have got if he dropped Detox and it was as wack as he said it was. But I got nothing more to say. Dr. Dre, Compton, is very highly granddad recommended. So go check it out. Flip it. All right, guys, we're going to do it for today's video. Make sure you give me a thumbs up and drop a comment. Tell me what you think of Dr. Dre Compton. If you heard it, if you haven't heard it, like I said, it's out now. You can check it out on iTunes and Apple Music. Listen to the shit. It's got a lot of good tracks on here, a lot of good features on here. Not the greatest album, but it's pretty damn good, so it's at least worth the listen. Previous video is on the side as well as my music video. Check those out. Show them some love. And as always, Twitter, Facebook, SoundCloud, Instagram. Links in the description below. And subscribe. Button on the screen. Button below. Wooly Reviews, twice a week, gaming channel, check that out, and I got nothing more to say. So until next time I take my leave, granddaughter, Dr. Dre Compton, it ain't detox, but what the fuck we gonna do now, because he said it's not coming out ever, it's done, it's fucking dead, so j take it, just take it. I'm out of here.